it. But I just want to give you a quick taste on how to get some G-code in and how to work things. Okay, so you have to find a file, create a file, whatever you want. Go into Illustrator, there's some other programs, uh, and create something called an SVG. So however you get your artwork, it needs to be an SVG if you're going to use this product called JS Cut jscut.org okay it's your cam in your browser see this thing's free and it works great with chili pepper because John and the guy that came up with this I can't remember his name kinda of work together a little bit on it and you can actually if you sign into this with your account you can actually pass uh, your settings and g-code right into chili pepper um, just by saving your settings or saving your g-code say for example you're cutting a bunch of plates that use the same cutter the same speeds the same uh, material thickness everything you can save your settings and load them up okay and you can bring in different pick parts you know so if you're cutting on quarter inch 60 61 and you're using this you know same tool it's all there there's no reason to make a change other than the actual part itself your tool path that would be the only change so it could be really quick to change parts out once you've got your tool and your material stuff lined out alright so once it's loaded the first thing you're gonna have to do is bring in a SVG file okay so if we click open I'm gonna come from a local file and I'm gonna pull one in we're gonna do an aux plate because that's kinda of the idea is to replicate these machines and pay it forward maybe do some uh, you know, if everyone cut a pair of plates, a set of plates for a guy after your machine's built, we could get these things all over the world. You just have to buy the extrusions. Anyway, so let's pull up our SVG, which is the X tall plate. All right. Now with this set up here, I like to go ahead and start over here on this side because I want to make everything in millimeters because my tool has been measured in millimeters, my parts millimeters, everything's in millimeters for me. All right, now there's some good setup videos on this. I'm just going to give you a quick walk around. So in Illustrator, I made this SVG file. And if you come over here where it says PX per inch, now the it's not pixels, it's PX, right? So there's no standard for it. If you come over here to this drop down and you hover these boxes, it gives you this bubble with information. And it's saying your SVG editors, if you use an Inkscape 0.9 up, you use 96 px per inch if you use an illustrator use 72 and that will match so I'm gonna type 72 right there okay now I'm set up there and I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna click on this part now you can bring in multiple parts say if you want to have tabs and things like that and you can set multiple operations but right now with this selected I'm gonna click create operation alright now over here is gonna see what we're gonna do are we gonna cut a pocket so say for example, if I was going to cut a pocket, I would want to cut all this out and make it gone, nothing but chips. Or if I wanted to engrave, uh, you know, like a groove in there that looks just like that and drill holes all the way through it, so it was just like a recessed area, that would be a pocket operation. And you can also set G codes up instead of just cutting this out. You could make your holes would be your pocket operation, and it would just turn all of that stuff into chips instead of solid parts but it would take longer with your machine to cut everything out but there's lots of ways to do things so say if we come out here we're gonna say inside because we don't want to make the holes bigger than what they are we want the holes exactly what they are but it's it's not right because it our tooling isn't set up correctly so say if we're gonna cut out an ox plate we're gonna come over here and we're gonna set it up in millimeters so a quarter inch plate I forgot what a quarter inch is in millimeters. I think it's 12 something. So we're going to type 1 slash 4 inches equal millimeter. Hit enter. And it's going to give us 0.25 inch equals 6.35. So I was wrong, right? I'm all new to millimeter stuff. So 6.35. So our thickness of our material is, what was it? 6.35. 6.35 millimeters. Oh, come on over here. 6.35. And delete key. Alright. Now, this clearance over here, this says 
when the tool lifts up out of the you know from the material how high above it is it going to be for clearance of clamps and things like that since we're not using clamps we're just going to tape it down or whatever for a piece of foam we're just going to say three millimeters all right and our z origin is the top of our material some cam programs or uh, stuff like that some machines use zero as the table thickness so it would be underneath the material so we're going z origin is the top of the material okay and then over here since we're doing it inside okay we can do outside and you can see that that definitely not a right for our parts we do inside we got to get our tool diameter let's go back to inside and we come over here to our tool diameter it's 1.66 millimeters it's this little guy right here okay it's a 1 16th bit which equals 1.60 millimeters all right so our tool diameter in millimeters is 1.6 all right now you can see that it looks right because wherever the black is it's going to be gone you'll see where it generates a tool path in just a second now how deep do we want it to go well we don't want to cut into our uh, table and our material is only 6.35 millimeters thick so if we type it 6.4 that should go down through the material and cut into the the wasteboard just a, just a hair okay now we're not going to worry about tabs I'm not talking about tabs and then down here is you're setting up your rates okay so when I say rates is like on the rapid moves it's moving 2400 and 2540 um, millimeters per minute and on the cuts it's moving 1016 millimeters per minute now if you looked at in the config file we're a lot faster than that what the capability is of the machine so you have to do some testing and determine what um, what speed you want to run based on the type of material if you're cutting foam you could run really fast if you're cutting steel you know you have to go really slow with lubricant right so depending on the material will determine your feed rates and your plunge depth is how fast the tool digs into the material all right so we're just going to leave that at this default for now which is really really slow all right over here's line conversions just let it know if you put a really big number in here your file is going to be gigantic because basically it controls how much uh, radius is in each circle so if your circles look round just leave it at 0.254 watch the video with John and the guy that wrote this program he explains it a lot better than me but this controls how the curves look or the radius look on your part okay and our G code units we put everything to millimeter so we're in millimeter and we want our zero to be lower left or center since this part's pretty small we're just going to not worry about the home positions on the machine we're just going to set it up to be right in the middle of the table because you know this isn't 700 millimeters wide so we just got to be close right we won't crash any axis so we're going to say zero center okay and you can see it underlines what it's doing and i want to return the head because i want to cut multiple of these parts i want to return to zero so all i have to do is pull my parts off put another piece of go and just push play again on the code inside chili pepper and we're good to go because we don't have to worry about setting up a new home position all right so once we got all this set up the way we want we come over here and you can save settings and that will save all of this information so you click save settings you could save it in the browser you could save it in a local file which means on your computer you could put it on google drive or you can send it to i don't think you can send it to chili pepper so say if I wanted to put this, call it aux settings, and I could save it to a local file. There it is. It downloaded the settings file. And then when I launch this, I could just open the settings file, navigate to that, double click on it, and it will populate all this information for me. And I don't have to um, set all this up. You can build a library of your open settings or your settings for your JS cut. The last step we're going to do is we're going to uh, simulate our code. I want to look at it and see what's going on. So you come over here and you click generate, right? So that's going to generate the G code and generate the tool pass. So you can see right here, 
that's where the tool is going to travel in yellow. And if you click on simulate code, you can see where it's at. And if you pull this slider back and forth, you can see what the operation is. So basically, it starts drilling the holes. It starts cutting the plate first, which is kind of strange. I don't know why it cuts the outside first, because I have to ask some questions about that. But if you come over here and you left click, you can raise this viewport and look at it. And you can see that it's a quarter inch thick piece of material. And you can watch the tool travel okay, by going like this. So let's go ahead and run this up a little bit. And you can see the tool is that yellow stem. And you can watch it travel, or you can look at it from the bottom. And you can actually see what it's going to do. It's going to cut into a quarter inch piece of material. And that's what's going to happen. All right. Oh, there's one other thing that I forgot is the depth, pass depth, right over here, okay, uh, and your pass depth is how deep the tool is going to be per path, you know, before it cuts all the way through our quarter inch. So since we're six, I don't want to cut that quarter inch plate in two passes. I want to make this like 1.5 millimeters, all right, and I'm going to click enter. Now I'm going to click generate. It's going to regenerate it with the correct pass depth, which is 1.5 millimeters per pass. So if you run your simulation, okay, you'll if you go really slow, you'll see that it'll make multiple passes per hole because it's only going 1.5 millimeters per rotation of each cut. All right, so it's going to take multiple times to go through 3.6.35. It's going to take like six little passes. So you're not going to damage your tool and you're not going to break anything off if you go slow and you go shallow. All right, that's just long-winded. I'm sorry, guys. It's just a lot of stuff to talk about. All right, so now we want to come over here and we want to save the G-code. Again, it's going to give you some options. A cool way to do it is just if you've got Google Drive set up, just send it right to Google Drive and it keeps everything for you. All of your SVGs, all of your G-code files, all of your set of files, everything. Or you can send it right to Chili Pepper and you can find it in the drop down menu. But for this example, we're going to save it locally. And I'm going to call this Ox2. Let's make it Ox9. Ox just so I know for sure that that's the code. Okay. So we're going to say local. And it saves it right down here to local. If I click show in folder, there's our Ox9 code. So we'll go back over to Chili Pepper. Okay. And let's bring this box over here. All right. If you come down here to this folder, this little drop down menu right there, it loads things right here. And then below, there's recent files that you've had open. Okay? But to load on the new stuff, it's real easy. You go to the folder where it's located, okay? And you just drag it and drop it right on the window. And it says OXO9 G code. Bang, there's our plate, there's all our tool paths, everything's good to go. And if you can't see it, just hit this eye window, right? And there's our parts. And it's homing to the uh, left over there, which is not a big deal. If I wanted it to be to the center, let me fix it. I want to go back over here to JS Cut, all right? I'm going to edit the tool pass, and I'm going to click zero center. Okay, and I'm going to click Save G Code. And I'm going to overwrite the one that's there to a local. All right, and that would be Ox9 with a little one in parentheses. Come over here, find that file. Ox1 with one in, Ox9 with one in parentheses. Drop it, and now you can see that the zero is dead center of the plate. Right, so you can click the simulate and it will run it. Let's give it up here to like times a thousand and it's actually going to run the tool path and uh, I need to figure out how to make it so that it doesn't cut the outside first but cut the outside last. So that's how you load up G-code. Now if you want to go ahead and run that G-code, you get your material set up, you turn on your spindle right down here which was that move that I told you S8000 M03 you turn on the spindle and then you come up here to the g-code and you hit the play button and boom it starts cutting your part just make sure that your head is right in the middle of your part let me turn off that spindle M05 
And a good way to tell if you've got enough room based on what the head position is, if you zoom in right down here, you can read. It says this part on the Y is 138.61 millimeters and on the X it's 153. So if you have your spindle set up in the middle of your table, for example, and you take your tape measure and you measure over, divide this number in half on the X and you've got that much room and you go like roughly in the middle half of whatever uh, 138 is, you know you've got enough room to cut that part based on where your spindle is sitting right now because it's going to start right there as being zero 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 so when you push play as long as you got enough room based on where your head's sitting from this number you're safe start your spindle push play and you're going to be cutting parts so that's it guys thanks for dealing uh, with me for these long-winded explanations if you got any questions join the chili pepper g plus group and the ox g plus group also, there's some other forums that I'm in. Uh, go to the Ox IRC. Uh, look for that. Or just Google Thomas Shu. Comment in the YouTube video, and here I am. I'm willing to help anybody that needs help. Just All you got to do is ask for it. All right, guys. Take care.